I'm Jeff Rubenstein from the PlayStation Blog. We're here in downtown San Francisco at Ubisoft Studios, and we're joined by Frédéric Lefrancois, the producer of Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, and Dan McCullough from Gryptonite Studios, the developer of Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. Now, this is the PSP version of Assassin's Creed. I've played through uh, the PS3 version, the original, and I was expecting, I, I gotta be honest, a more stripped down version than what we saw. How did you manage to jam the real Assassin's Creed experience into the PSP? Uh, well, frankly, we have a, we have a pretty robust engine um, that's uh, shipped many games on many consoles, the Elemental engine we've been using for, for many, many years. And uh, truthfully, we've just partnered really well with Ubisoft. We've had a lot of access to the Assassin's Creed 2 team and a lot of their, their code help, a lot of support from that end. And uh, just a lot of iteration, you know. I mean, it, it just it took a lot to get the, the, the tech onto the smaller platform, but there's a lot of power in that little PSP, so we did all right with it. Now, I, if you're out there watching it and you haven't played the game yet, which, you know, it's not out yet, so you haven't, you might be wondering how can you, how can you do it? The controls are, are a little different. You're, you're missing a couple of shoulder buttons and a second analog stick. How do you adapt a game that really used every single button uh, frequently to this control scheme? How, how was that done? Yeah, basically uh, it was quite a challenge at first because obviously the uh, PSP has uh, less button than the uh, home console uh, controllers, but uh, working with the uh, development team, we've been able to map all of the controls that were in the original to the PSP and even with the uh, camera control. So we're very happy because uh, the player will have the same experience on PSP than it had on the original. Okay, let's talk storyline. At the end of the original Assassin's Creed, Altair, uh, he had slayed uh, Robert from uh, in, in the Holy Land and had really gotten the, uh, the, the apple of Eden uh, that, yeah. that everyone had been really fighting over. What happens next? Okay, so uh, yeah, like you said, you're, uh, play, you get to play Altair right after the event of Assassin's Creed 1. So what happens that uh, the Templars, after the death of Robert de Saab, they fled the Holy Land to settle on the Cypress Island. So you're Altair and you go on the uh, Cypress Island in order to uh, fight the Templar uh, occupation. So you will join force with the local resistance and you will get rid of uh, all of the uh, Templars' commander. Okay. Now, when I, when I think of Assassin's Creed, I think of uh, free running, I think of exploration and a, and a lot of climbing, and, and then and fighting and, and then a lot of running away when I get uh, you know, outmatched or, or outnumbered. Do all these things translate or, or, or are they present in the PSP version in Assassin's Creed Bloodlines? Yeah. In the, uh, it was really important when we developed the uh, Bloodlines to have all of the key elements of, of the franchise. You just name uh, them all. So we'll be able uh, to have uh, to explore the open world. So in this case, there'll be uh, two big cities to explore. So the city of uh, Limassol and Kyrenia. And you will be able to uh, free run, uh, fly to beam, sprint. All of the moves that Altair used to do, you'll be able to perform them. So uh, it's, re it's really interesting. We've been able to translate them all on the PSP. Now, with all the, the motion, the big cityscapes, and being able to see uh, a far distance is really important for the animation to be like really tight. Uh, so, you know, so you don't you know, obviously end up with any kind of you know, slideshow or anything. Now, I, uh, watching the demo, it looked super smooth. So technically, you know, what frame rate are you running at? What kind of uh, distance are you able to see? And, and things like that. Well, we've been able to actually manage a, a consistent 30 frames per second throughout the entire game, which gives you know the the smooth feel and of course the you know the absolutely slick nature of the master assassin in Assassin's Creed. Um, as far as the distance you can see, we we do vary that a little bit depending on you know if we're in the larger city districts or in the in the smaller castles. But um, you know the, the distance you can see is is pretty wide. You can climb up to high points. You can synchronize. You can see you know well into the distance even in the larger city districts. So we've been able to you know through a couple of different uh, you know technical solutions, been able to really push that envelope and, and bring a, a much broader experience than I think a lot of PSP users are used to. Now while the game might be being shrunk down onto the PSP, you have had a couple of years since Assassin's Creed first hit on the, on the larger consoles. What uh, tweaks or, or things have you added to the, to the formula uh, in that time? Uh, but playing Bloodlines, you can expect all of the original gameplay and uh, what we did basically is that we've uh, added a lot more mission variety. So uh, from a player perspective, uh, the experience will be more varied and we've adapted the uh, mission loop uh, so it'd be shorter to uh, be tailored to the uh, PSP console. So uh, yeah, that's one of the big points that we made. 
Yeah, I mean, um, some of the you know some of the things that we tried to break away from were uh, kind of a you know formulaic nature to the the process from memory block to memory block. We've added a few more you know mission types, and we've broken out the rest so that we can, as Frederick said, we can really mix them up and really give each memory block kind of its own unique feel and unique experience. Now uh, we've seen now quite a bit of uh, Assassin's Creed 2, especially uh, at the uh, at the PlayStation press conference at E3. We've seen some cool moves from Ezio. Uh, is is Altair going to be able to maybe borrow any of those? Yes, uh, there. Yeah, actually, uh, yes. There are some uh, cool moves coming uh, from EC2 that has been uh, introduced into a Bloodline. So there'll be definitely uh, some. Uh, I can, yeah, the grab from Ledge is definitely one of them. <laughs> if I have to uh, say one, and there'll be some others. That's a fan favorite one. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew out there that uh, one of the coolest moves, that, at least that we've seen so far out of Assassin's Creed 2, will be uh, playable and. So anytime we see a, a major franchise like Assassin's Creed that exists on the PS3 come to the PSP, people wonder, is there going to be any interoperability between the two? Yes, definitely. There'll be uh, ways to uh, transfer collectibles from one version to the other and both ways. So basically how it works is that you'll be able to transfer all the Templar coins that you will collect in the PSP version onto the uh, PS3. Moreover, you'll be able to collect the weapons of the uh, targets that you're going to uh, kill in the PSP version onto the AC2. And the other way around, you'll be able to uh, get the uh, codex and health upgrade and transfer them into the PSP version. Yeah, I think that is the first time I've ever seen a game that goes both ways, that it doesn't just unlock uh, you know, something on the PS3 or the PSP, but for both. So uh, definitely a compelling reason, besides the fact that uh, the game looks really good, to, to probably want to go after both. So uh, when do we get to play this? This game will be released in holiday 2009. Okay, well, thanks very much, and we hope to see more in between now and the time it hits on store shelves.